Walton trustees held a special meeting Monday, August 19th to discuss remedies and steps taken for flooding on Cherry Street and Guild Avenue that some residents say is caused by a business owner developing adjacent property. There were a few reasons why we called the meeting tonight. One, one was for to discuss uh, Cherry Street and ditches over there and what's been talked about. Then we thought uh, the, the chief wants to talk to us about police car, which we need and Butch wants to talk to us about hiring somebody else. That's right, I had to think about it for a second, I'm sorry. Um, but the first thing we'll talk about is Cherry Street. And Do uh, Cherry Do Street, I'm sorry, Do and Gill Street. I'm looking at Big Street. And, and as you know, the, this, this property was, that area over there was given to us years ago by Mr. Passamano. Uh, that ditch has been there for who knows how long. I don't know. You guys say that you've been there. 50 years. Huh? I've been there 50 years. 50 years or better? That ditch has been there? 50, 53. 53. Okay. We're close. <laughs> um, and uh, Jimmy Frainer, the, the Mr. Frainer, has filled in part of that ditch close to the Fancher Avenue, which has caused Cherry Street and part of Fancher Avenue itself to be flooded uh, for a while now. Uh, Butch and him were having a discussion to try and open it up to see what we can do to stop working on some of the problem. Um, and when Butch comes up, he can explain it better too. Um, nothing was being accomplished. He wasn't working at all. And I said, let me get involved. Let me go in and sit down with him and say, and he, when he came in, it was going to look like it might be tough. I said, listen, I'm not here to argue. I just want to resolve a problem that we had. I said, you covered up the ditch. I said, the ditch is where the water flows. I said, I know that we have to figure out a way for our water that's coming from Maple Street or, or Cherry Street, whatever water we have, we have to figure out an alternate route. I said, but why don't, before we do this, why don't we work out some kind of plan where you'll dig up the ditch and we'll at the same time look for an alternate route for our water so that our water will not be going into your ditch supposedly and it might hopefully solve some of the problem. And, and I said, but you got the wetlands over there. And he said, no, those aren't wetlands. And I said, well, what do you mean they're not wetlands? He says, the Army Corps of Engineers came down and gave me a letter or something that says they're not wetlands. The only wetlands he says he has is the one across from the Doig, that little area over there, and he said it's less than an acre. And I said, well, okay, then uh, let me see a copy of that report you got from the Army Corps. And he said, my lawyer says that I should not give it to you. And I said, well, if it's correct, why shouldn't we have it? He said, my lawyer says not to. I said, okay, fine. So I left there with the intention of Number one, talking about what kind of agreement we could come up with. And number two, before any of that would be signed, we'd have to see the letter that says that the Army Corps of Engineers said that it's on wetlands. I spoke to Dave Merzik, and he said he would call his lawyer, Mr. Gold, Gould, G O U L D, or something, like and only on them. And that was last Tuesday. And he said his response was that he was out of the office until Monday because he was taking his son to college. So this morning I called Dave again and he said, Ed, I'm going to give him another call. And he did. And the lawyer never called him back as of right now. So that's part of where we are right now. We, I just want to let you know what we have done as the village. We have checked with our code enforcement officers to see if there's any violations of the code. And Dick, you know, you've been here before mm -hmm. and no. Butch has called up the DEC, state DEC, to take a look at it, correct? And there's not much more we can, nothing we can do with them or the state. However, the feds, if it is still a wetland, there is much they can do about it. I put in two calls already to, to the Army Corps of Engineers. One was a, like an 800 number, and the other one was up in Albany. I was told by Bill Brown, he helped me out, that that's the most current number you can get a hold of. I left them all my information to please give me a call regarding this. Um, the CWC, I spoke to them about 
if we have to do an alternate route of water, or make some catch basins and things like that, if they would help us. And they said that they would come down next week. Sometime next week. Then with, the with them and the DEP. And she stated that, well, tell me what, you, what they said they, to you. They basically said that if, you know, they come down to a site review, um, and depending on what they find, she says it could go either way, but she, you know, was surprised that, that an area had been filled in such as that. So they're supposed to come down next week. We're supposed to do a walkthrough just to. But the, the DEP will come down with them at the same time. So that's another agency that we can get involved with. Um, you know, other than calling the lawyer, checking with the, the DEC, checking with our code, checking with, yeah, there is something in the state code that for liability, if the runoff or something like that causes an area to flood, there is a liability that you can know, but that's when you got to get a lawyer and go to court and sue him that way. Uh, that would have to be on the individual homeowner, or if it does damage to the village property, we would have to do the same thing. Um, as of right now, that's ex pretty much where we are right this moment. Um, I am not. We're not going to sign any agreement or anything like that until we until I see the letter, this so-called letter that says that the Army Corps of Engineers have deemed that not a wetlands. Um, if there is such a letter, and we have it, I will make it available to everybody who lives over there, and we will um, work on an alternative plan to get catch basins and water, run it so that the water doesn't stay on Cherry Street mainly. Um, the problem we're going to have, uh, well, what Butch suggested, we're going to talk to the board about it tonight, is that if you want to try an immediate fix for quick fix, we could block the, the, ca the catch basin on, Gil on, on Maple Street that has that line running into the ditch. We can easily block that. They can, he can also do uh, another thing that would catch it on about 100 feet that would catch it on all the Maple Street so that water would run down that way. The one on Cherry Street, we could put a, a, a block on that just so the water don't run into the pit and then say, okay, none of this is our, because he's saying that's all our water. And we're saying no, it's not. So if we we did that, then you would see what would happen for temporarily until we can figure out something. But we're going to have the CEC, CWC come down, and we're going to figure out some alternate route. It's regardless of what happened when it was put in years ago, there was no agreement that was made. Maybe that was the first problem that was made uh, about, regarding we have the right of way. I spoke to the lawyer. I said, can we do anything like that? He said, no, it's this problem. There's no agreement. There's nothing in the, uh, there's nothing in the code that, that you can help you with. He says, you could try and go eminent domain if you want to try something like that. But he said, that's a long process and it's a very sticky thing to do. And that was the only options that I, I had so far. So I just want everybody to know that I've called everybody I can think of that would have any kind of involvement in this. I'll give you a chance to say something. Go ahead. My main question could be, why not, like you uh, suggested, ship the water directly to the river down Maple Street instead of out? Uh, yeah. And uh, secondly, if you need a witness, I saw the guy fill that ditch in. I saw it from that company. And I called these people. Yeah. They responded by we could get a hold of them. <clears throat> this is not hearsay. 51 years, I've never had a problem. Never. Until now. Now vouch for that. Oh, Barrow, the excavating company you're talking about? That's who you called up? Okay. I can call them up. That's not a problem. Um, we already talked about maybe diverting the water as much as we can down Maple Street, and Bush said it's only 100 feet, so I, I think that's a very doable thing. However, I, I'm still worried about what water is on Cherry Street. Yeah. And he 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 built up that thing, and there's a lot of water coming down from his property onto Cherry Street. Uh, he has said to me that in his plans that he put together, they came down and said he has to put in these gigantic tanks in the ground 
that would be catching water. He has to put two of them in. He said, I forgot how many, they were very big ones. And he said, that's what he has to do for, for rainwater and stuff like that. And I said, well, okay. I mean, we'll have to see the plans to see something like that is going on because he built it up so high. But there's nothing in our code that we can stop him with. And I asked the lawyer about it. So go ahead, Dick. You were asking about the wetlands. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I, I see that. We have a copy of it. I, I, I agree with you, but I, I have to. He says no, I but I have to. to argue with the man. Huh? He's over there filming the dish more now. No, no, I know that. Right now, as we speak. No, he's dumping it. He's dumping right now. He's not dumping in the ditch. Well, it's right near there. No. It's and the property, you mean filling yeah, in the property? Putting more stuff. Now, my problem is, as, like I said, you cover a much bigger area than just his property or Cherry Street. Mm -hmm. There are no catch bases on uh, Bush. There's one on Gill, plus yeah. the one at the corner. And I don't know what, where, all the water, three, where all the water from yeah, Tramp Avenue. Gills. There's three down Gills, yeah. The high school, the athletic fields. That boy you said is not coming by. The, the, the school's parking lot. Yeah. Not coming across the road. Right. Yeah, there's that only one, yeah, that, they, they did. yeah we, we. But the rest of the area all would drain in there because everything else is higher other than what goes to the, to the, uh, Oh, the cemetery Toy Brook. Brook. Which I got a picture Brook, of that. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I think that we can take care of, of Maple Street getting gilled in Maple, all that going down. Well, the problem I have, if there's about 10 acres, if you look at all of his property, all the property off to the, that side of Maple Street, everything south of camp, say it's about 10 acres. One inch of water in 10 acres is 2,271,000 2, gallons of water. <laughs> Do we have the infrastructure down Maple Street to handle that kind of flow? As I say, it, 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 you really need, what they need is a hydrologist report and say, this is what drains in there, this is how much water can go in there, and you have to have infrastructure that will actually handle it. I mean, you're not going to do that with a three or four inch pipe. And it is all uphill right now. And we wouldn't be draining his property either. Yeah, how are you going to stop it? Yeah. <laughs> from, from all his property, I mean, all the water here. Right, right. and then all the runoff from his <laughs> All the runoff from his property. Yeah. And I know he was, he said to me the other day that it was water from the street that gets onto his property. Well, and I have pictures of while it was raining on that Friday the brown rivers running down from his the parking lot, really, I, you know, right down into that shallow spot. And then, so. I, I, I agree with you 100%. There's, there's a couple and, and, and problems. And I'm, I, I wanted you guys, I wanted you to know that we are expending any avenue we can to try and work this out. My, my, my only reason why I said we'd make some agreement because I'm trying to get him to dig that so that at least the water runs until we find another alternate route. As far as this goes, I agree with you, Dick. I, I'm on the Coalition of Watershed Towns, and we were talking about wetlands. There's a whole new project coming in from the state regarding wetlands. They're redefining certain wetlands, and if it's a wetlands that they consider wetlands, then they're saying that 200 feet around the, the, the wetlands itself, nothing can be built, nothing can be done. So if, if that is, in fact, wetland, then that whole project is going to be a problem. So I, I, will, I will tell you this, we're not going to sign any kind of agreements until we see that letter that comes from, from the Army Corps of Engineers. And like I said, I put the call in, I'm just waiting for them to call me back. And that's the, yeah, go ahead. I have a question. Sure. Um, could it be considered that this could also be a health issue? In other words, you see the stagnant water over there laying there. You got school children that come down, they walk down uh, our street, they right. walk down Cherry Street, and mosquitoes. I mean, any kind of health problem. The water center in the city, I mean, yes. But that yeah, I It's yeah. a concern. With the mosquitoes, you can't walk out the front door without getting bitten by mosquitoes right. anymore. The okay. smell is there. Right. Our basement is still, still drying out. Mold and abatement now. Who's going to pay for that? I, I, I'm more concerned. I, I understand 
Yeah, I have to clean up. We're going to have to clean it up anyway. Right, no, I know. But right now, the water is still over the catch basin there. It's, it's still there. Yeah. It doesn't drain. I thought you said it was down a little it, bit. It drained a little bit, yeah, since the last But it's still, no, no, I, I get the point. Well, I, I'm just saying, there's still yeah. standing, it's right. kind of weak, it's still not standing water. Right. I still have ducks in the pond across the street from my house. That never had water in there before you filled that in. Yeah. That ditch has been there forever. Yeah. Well, it I, is I, a natural water. I, I agree with you. He said the only wetlands he had that was across the street from you, that little that pond over there. I, even without looking at the wetlands, the storm drainage is a natural water course, right. which that is what he filled in. Now, if they have been moved by any of the four or five different agencies that have built something in there, but at least the water had somewhere to go. Well, do you, you remember when you were, stopped it. Do you remember when you were on the board, the Army Corps came down and looked at that three years ago, I think four years ago, you were on the board then. I was there when they walked through and they looked at it and you know everything was trying to get it running and everything, and I thought that was Good. They didn't say you can fill it in or anything like that. They, as far as they were concerned, at that time it was. So, and unless the, the the letter states specifically it isn't, which I would show everybody. I'm kind of skeptical of that, but we have to see it in writing first. Nothing else will be done as far as agreement. But I, I would, we would, we could plug it, plug it just for now, just to prove the point that it's not our water. He's saying it's our water. That's what, what's it going to do for the water in front of my house? Nothing. 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 Oh. You know, the water is only about three inches from coming in my front door. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, and, and that's yeah. the thing. He's saying that all of that is because of our water, is what he's saying. So if I plug the pipe. So we plug so the pipe. Whose water was it for the 50 years before? Yeah. Right. And yeah. that broke that, yeah. that ditch. That's it. And shouldn't he have a responsibility being, I, I witnessed him filling that ditch in? No, he knows. He said he filled it in. I'm. I'm I've been talking to the lawyers to try and find out if there's any way that we can go after him for filling it in, and uh, he says no. I gave Butch, and I think you've got a copy of it. Yeah. Of the, he says you have the right to go in and just dig it out. Right. The only the only problem with that 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 situation there was that township was able to move the dirt from the shoulder of the road. Oh no, that was actually a ditch that they dug right down across the farmer's field. And he took them to court, and the court said, if it, that water's been running that way for more than 10 years. Well, no I, I, I can tell you, I will speak to Dave Merzik tomorrow morning again about mm -hmm. that, that exact thing. And if he says, well, let him research it, if we can, I have no problem That's doing that either. Saying. I don't care what the long-term solution is going to be, right. but there needs to be an immediate something, right. because right. there's an immediate hazard. Yeah. And I'm sure Tony doesn't want to devalue his home. No. I don't want to devalue mine. No. Dana just bought his. He sure doesn't want to have to move out. No, of and I, 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 any within the law that we can do, I'm willing to do. I mean, we'll do 100%. I'll, I'll speak to Dave about this tomorrow, this specific thing. Okay. And if there is a way that we can do it, the next day he'll be over there digging. I, I just, we got to watch out that we don't go on the property and get ourselves be liable for anything. Okay. But if, if he says, yeah, and I checked it out, we can do it, and he clear clip, the day after they will be over to digging it out. I could kill us. I will make sure it's done. And But in the meantime, we'll still look to help some help with rerouting re re some of the water that we can. It's still not going to take care of his issue. He's saying that those big, humongous 100,000-gallon tanks that he's putting in there is going to take care of the water. But that's, that's just... Speak to the hospital about the big tanks they put under their parking lot. And found out the plumbing worked backwards because he had a pot in his <laughs> Yeah, I know. I remember yeah. that. Yeah, I remember that. I do, yeah. So they so, don't necessarily work this way. No, no, no. I, I mean, <laughs> in theory they do, but in actuality, well, sometimes it's a whole different story. And that might work perfectly fine, you know, for his building with the runoff from, you know, his roof and the everything roof and else. But, but that doesn't not take care of the other part. Correct, correct. It all depends where the tanks are and how yeah. they. He said, I'm just saying what he told me. He said he would. He, the tanks would go in and the property would be so that the water would run into the tanks and not onto the street. So I said, in theory, that's good. <laughs> in actuality, it's another story, so we'll see. But I, I will check this out tomorrow with Dave Merzik. Well, my, my big concern is the, immediate. the major part of the hurricane season is just beginning. Yes. That was not a hurricane that we got the last hurricane. It was less than four inches of water. 
Yeah. What's going to happen if we get like Connecticut where they got eight or ten? I don't even want to think. But I, I, I will. I, I realize you have a problem, and I, I just want you to know that we're trying everything possible we can by law to do it. You know, Dick, but you've been yeah. on the board. We're trying. I mean, I'm. I didn't think of that thing with with Dave Murphy asking about that. Um, you got a copy of that thing where the yeah. people went in and have it. Yeah. Give it to me. I'll, e I'll email it to Dave tomorrow morning, and he will go and check it out. And just for some added clarity, there's a difference between historic wetland mapping and actually wetland delineation. Because wetland delineation is, is actually a uh, coordinate value that, that's taken. They go out and flag those positions. So if a wetland has been disturbed, then that historic you wetland doesn't right. appear the way that the, the, the mapping, okay. the way it looks now versus what the mapping may show. So could, there's some, there's some. Could you identify yourself? I don't know you. Eric Ball, Deputy Mayor, sir. Yeah. Mayor, my question, uh, two questions basically. Sure. His new buildings and parking lots are going to create a lot of impermeable surface. So I'm assuming that's what these large tanks are for. Yes. But that's also going to severely impact groundwater penetration in our neighborhood and make it even worse. So well, I'm I, assuming I, that the construction permits he's got are taking account of all of that. And also, can you confirm that all of the correct environmental permits were given two years ago when I bought my house and all of a sudden that wetland was six feet higher, that the correct environmental permits were given and I can apply the for and, and get and have the co guys double check. Please do. Please that that's that's you know, because we got talking about stuff. So there used to be a wetland yeah. there, now it's six feet higher and you got ponds across. Be, those permits will be through the state. Correct. Right. Yeah. yeah. No, no, right, but I'm but still right. well, he's got to do them. Right. That's not even through us, but he will have to do those. Right. State, so yeah. I would just like to use them now. They were done previously. Is that what you're saying? So for the state, the state he has to be filling in more than an acre of land to get it. The state apparently called him, they didn't want to drive down here, so they asked him to get the measurements. And he gave the measurements as less than an acre. So as far as the state's concerned, he didn't need a permit. Well, I think one of us, if we call the state and say, uh, can you come and verify that? Yeah. You know, before we have to get together a class action lawsuit to have it done. Yeah. You know, the property owners over there. But, it, you know, I would like to see verification. Right. As far as his stormwater runoff, that's going to be all the DEP. They're going to all be involved with that. So. Now, right. the, the DEC was down last week. What became yes. of that? You talked to the DEC, didn't you? I did, not, nobody, I didn't meet with anybody. The young man that I spoke to was from their streams department. Right. We, we called up and said there was an issue and to come down and to take a look at it. Um, right. We won't know anything until they actually make well, a report out. Right, Dick and I talked to a young man from Trevor. Yeah. Trevor, the nice was, guy looked it over. He but, says they sent the wrong department. Yeah, he's from streams, home. not wetlands, oh, not okay, runoff. Okay. Right. So, but he would talk to their analysts and have them look at the right. historic maps, the current maps, etc. Because um, maps change over time. Right. We know that. Right. Um, yeah. But and the one person I spoke to from the state said that because it was a federal wetlands, they didn't have any jurisdictional right the feds say well it's a state wetland right yeah yeah, one, yeah. go this way yeah exactly. but, but, but we're not going to stop until we get an answer on this until something is physically done i i'm sorry that you have to go through all this but i realize what the flooding is i mean we had the flood in 2006 i had seven feet of water in my basement so i know i have an idea not an ongoing problem like you do but i realize what, what flooding can do how much, you got now? Was that, how much you got now? No. How much did I have now? Yeah. I don't have any right now. How much did you have? From that? I don't know because I had three pumps running. Yeah, from day one. Dana had 12 inches. I had 12 inches. inches. He would mm -hmm. never have water there before? Not in the two years I've been there. And the, the former owner said there was never water in this basement and there was no evidence of it. So. And Tony. Remember that flooding ever? Yeah. And Tony had two or three inches the other day. I was a little bit in his. That was before this last storm. I don't know what he had to if, if you didn't hear me the first time, 51 years we've been there, not a drop of water in the cellar until I washed and filled that ditch. In. That's what happened. Can I ask you a question? Even what does he have to gain by doing this? What is what is the what is the reason for filling in the ditch all of a sudden? Does anybody have any ideas? 
Too many people talking, I'm wearing hair and hair. <laughs> Does anybody know why he filled in the ditch? Like, what does he gain? Yes, he was leveling up his land. It was running downhill. They backfilled it with dirt, pushed it, and leveled it up. They went too far. They went over to the ditch, which is, he could have stopped 10 feet from the ditch. There's no reason why he couldn't have. I haven't been in construction all my life. And I think it's stupid what he's saying. And, the, and he let us, he actually let us, I met with him back then, he let us come in there with the excavator. We spent a few days over there with laser levels. We did the ditch all the way around where he stopped bulldozing. And everything all flowed and everything was good until now this. So he let us on there before it cleared out. And now Is there a project that's about to be built on there or something? Yeah, he wants to put a big building. Yeah, he's going to put another big build like they have, another one, second one. He's supposed to have, a, I think, a bus company coming up. They're going to build buses or something. And they're going to bring another 100 employees. I said, that's great. However, you got to make sure that the people that live in the area are okay, too. And, and I'd, I'd like to mention another thing for anybody who doesn't know me. I built several, several houses over there. Not only did I give the street to the village, the street cost me 8000 If you look in the records, I gave it to the village for $1. I'd like to have it dried up. <laughs> that gilded cherry that you gave. Was it Cherry Street or Gill Street? Again? Part of Cherry and Gill. The part of them together, okay. Now, yes, you're over there, you'll see the Cherry Street in front of my house is bigger. My yeah. house was not there originally. Your yeah. house down the short way was blocked off. Right. That's where I owned. That, that's where the street ended. Oh, okay, I got you. Okay. Um, again, like I said, I'm waiting, waiting to hear from the Army Corps of Engineers. I will speak to Dave Merzik tomorrow about this and see if there's a way and trust me if there's a way i give you my word if he says ed you can go do it the day after butch will be there with his crew digging the whole thing out so uh, everything legally that we can do we will do yes have you reached out to our local politicians our, our state representatives have you contacted their offices for help at least to get through to the army corps I can do that. I haven't, I haven't done it as of yet, so, okay. but I, I figured the Army Corps sometimes takes, well, we don't the word I heard with the Army Corps is sometimes they don't call you back, but then I had, if I could call that direct number in Albany, which I did, he says usually within a couple of days you hear, so I figure I want to give him two days, and then I'll call Molinero or, or Oberaka. Okay. And, and yeah. And, and Teague. Now, yeah. Right? yeah. Teague, well, Teague's coming here in December, oh, so still, uh, January. He's still Angelino. Yeah, Angelino. But I will call, I saw them the other day, last week, and I was talking to them. I mentioned we had an issue down here, so I didn't ask for any help yet because I wasn't sure how we we're going to get answered. But if I don't get an answer by tomorrow, I will call probably Molinaro. I'll call them both. And, uh, the governor's know. regional director can also assist if with, with agencies. If for a health issue, right. would it be somebody it's, to contact them because of the school children to protect them? I, I guess it could be yeah, a health issue with mosquitoes. You say there's a lot of mosquitoes over oh, there. Oh, yeah. Have you ever looked how many diseases are carried by mosquitoes? Yeah, I know. There's a lot. There's a lot. There's, that's in the Northeast. Ed, would a lawsuit from the neighborhood do anything? Well, yeah, I, I, I probably would, but it's, you know, like the typical lawsuits are, it's going to take forever to go to court and get dates and everything. I think our way right now we're doing, if for some reason I run into a, a brick wall and nobody can help us at all, then that's your other alternative. But that's going to take a long time and money. I would rather, give me another week or so to see what we can actually get done and, and then I'll let you know. I'll, I'll call you up, I'll, I'll let you know what's going on. I, I really am upset with that. I tried to sit down and talk like a gentleman to figure things out and I figured... My reason for doing that was figuring if we, if I can at least get the ditch open for now, then we can worry about the rest of it afterwards. That was my main goal, getting the ditch open so the water falls. And he said, yes, I'll do it if you do this, if you, if you make a different flow of the water, which we can do. And I said, fine, but we just have to have it in writing. And that's, why, that's how I got the lawyers involved in this. So maybe I'll know more tomorrow, I don't know, but I will keep you informed. I will call up on this definitely first thing in the morning. I'll speak to Dave Marcy. I also wanna, I wanna thank whoever suggested it, you or Butch. 
It helped my cellar. My cellar has been dry since you pumped. Since we pumped? Yeah. yeah. Which did that. He went out with his crew and did it, yeah. yeah. I told him to get as much as you can out. I mean, there's only so much they can do, but they did a good job. Yeah. We try to help. I mean, uh, it took, it took a couple more days for me to get mine. You're from the way. But my sump pump finally fell out. Yeah, I know. I was driving down there every day. I saw how I was trying to not to drive through the water too much because I know when Mary had called me, you said the truck's going to make a wave into the house. So I, I, I went up and I, I, tur I turned around right. I you to the regatta on Cherry Street, if I remember correctly. I, 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 yes, you did. And I turned around just before I got to the water because I didn't want to create a wave. Not that I didn't go there. I've been going there every day yeah. looking at well, it. Well, that was thoughtful of you because many cars went through and yeah, it, it was. I know what you said to me. That stuck in my brain. So I said, no, I'm not going to go through. So yeah. you didn't see me pass it too. It wasn't that I was there. I've been going there every day. <laughs> And Butch has been filling me in. I said, keep doing it until we get it down as low as we can. Butch so, has done a great job keeping yeah. us apprised of what was going on. And yeah, we'll got, we'll, and, and until we get this up, God forbid, if it starts raining again and you have a problem, we know now what has to be done. He'll be down there right away. If we have to get another pump someplace else, we will. Even on the weekend? <laughs> we gotta pay. We gotta pay what we gotta do. We'll we'll do what we gotta do to get it going. Uh, and like I said again, not to repeat what I am repeating. I will call Dave Merzik first thing in the morning. I will speak to the, our representatives within a couple of days, and we'll get some kind of results, something that we're going to do. And I'll keep you informed. That's all I can say for right now. To subscribe or advertise, call 607-464-4009.